I have been using Notion for over two years and for more than one year professionally where I have been helping businesses create their systems in Notion. So I have seen a lot of different ways to set up this app. But in today's video, I want to invite you into my workspace so I can show you around, we can have a little bit of a walk because the way that I have things set up may give you some new idea of things that you can implement yourself. So this is going to be the system that is going to guide me through 2022. So let's get started. Okay, so this over here is my dashboard. This is the page where everything starts. I recommend everyone to always create a dashboard because creating one and then putting all your pages within it is going to make it then very easy to find this page again. Because for example, whatever page I go, I will always have my dashboard in the breadcrumbs. So this is super easy. And also, if your brain works a little bit like me, that you are very structured, I love having this view where I can see everything I have. And then as I go into more deep levels of my system, then it's like, like a file explorer in our, in our computer. So I highly recommend this setup. The way I have it is on the top, I have pages that are going to be useful for me. And then here on the bottom, I have the different pillars of life that I have here set up. But before getting into the systems themselves, I want to also show you this backend page. These also are recommendations that I give to every of my clients where I tell them to save over here all the different databases that we're going to be using throughout our workspace. Because remember, then we can surface the data using linked databases wherever we want. So it doesn't really matter where the database are stored. But this way, we ensure that we are not going to delete accidentally the data databases where we are going to be using them because that will make us lose all our data, of course. And also I find that this is a very organized way of having all our databases in one and only place. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard and let's start with the way that I'm handling task management. So for me, a task manager will always have three steps. One in the one that we create the task. Second, the one where we schedule the task. And third, the one where we actually do what the tasks say. So for the first step, I have this add new task page where I'm going to be inputting the data inside of these properties that I need every time that I create a new task. And the way that I'm cleaning this view so I just see the, the recent tasks is by using this filter over here. So with the status is not started, I'm automatically putting all the tasks as not started. And with this created is on or after yesterday, I'm going to keep newly created tasks over here just for one day. Okay, because I want that this view is always empty. Another way that I also have for inputting tasks into my system is by using Todoist, the task management app. And what I do is I use Zapier to link Todoist and Notion. So whatever task is created in Todoist is going to also come into this task database. There is some limitations, of course, because we will not be able to fill some of the properties, but it is very useful when we are in a hurry and we just need to write something down and find it in Notion later. I have a video full of different automations ideas that I did with Zapier that I'm going to link over here. So if you want to see any other automations, just feel free to go there. Another page that I have that also helps me a lot is the plan page. So here, what I can do is to drag things. This is all the task database. So I can drag things from here to here and assign them a date. So this is the second step in my task management system. So first, remember, create tasks and then plan them. If you're a little bit familiar of my system, uh, you know that I have a weekly review. So this is part of the weekly review. But if I find myself that I want to reschedule something and I'm in the middle of my week, I can just come here and schedule some stuff. So up to now, if we have a defined entry point for our tasks and a way to plan them, we have a very, very robust task management system. We don't need more, more bells and whistles. I'm all for simplicity. So just with these two things, we have a very competent task management system, but we still have one thing left, which is where do we actually do these tasks? So I'm glad that you asked because that's what this focus page is for. So here I have a list of the tasks that I have to do today or that are overdue. And now I'm also using the grouping feature to assign each of the tasks at time of the day. 
I have separated the day in three. So in the beginning of the day, I'm going to come here, see the task that has no time assigned, and then I'm just gonna drag and drop all of them to plan my day. Of course, here on the right, I have my habit tracker, which you will be able to find in my life compass a template that I can link in the description of this video. I have here what I have to do tomorrow, but well, tomorrow is Saturday, so I have nothing to do but everything that is coming for tomorrow I have here so I can have a little bit of vision of what's coming. And here I have my events that are automatically brought from Google Calendar into here. So I can see here, you can see the filter here that the project is event. So this is, I'm setting it up in the automation. Then in this page, I have my vision home, the one that I want to or buy or rent. I would prefer buy, but we will see. It's a little bit expensive, this kind of home. But here I have like the, the vision, the which is basically what I'm working towards, okay? So this, this motivates me. And then I have here my dream income sources and a tweet that I found that was very, very beautiful and that I relate with a lot. So I always have it here. So this is basically my daily driver. Well, I have here then my YouTube scripts. This is the script of this video that I'm watching on the other screen. And this is an upcoming video. But well, as you can see, task management wise, this is the third step of the task management, which is to actually do the things. And again, with these three steps, we have a fully done task management system. Of course, then we can link the tasks to projects or something a little bit more complex. But if you are just looking to get started, this for me will be the minimum viable system that I call that you can create. So now let's go back to the dashboard. And I want to show you this page over here, which is the content factory. Of course, this is related to YouTube, as you may probably have seen. And I'm gonna go real quick over it because I have a full video about this that I'm also going to link over here where I explain how the full system works. But basically, I have separated the content creation system in different steps. First, to input the idea, then to write the title and the thumbnail, and then whenever it's ready to script, I send it to this column. Then a little bit of planning over here, so all the unplanned videos are going to be drag and drop to the right. And finally, the video factory that I call, which is the process that all the videos after they are scheduled go through until they are published. Another thing that is very cool that we can also do with some automations is having what I have over here, which is the YouTube editing dashboard that I'm sharing with my video editor. So whenever I finish writing a script and I have all the raw files ready, I'm going to upload them into Google Drive and with a sub within Zapier, I'm going to automatically assign the video to him and send all the files to him so he can get started. So here's how we are doing it right now. These are all the videos that are on my site. These are all the videos that are on my editor's site. So whenever I finish filming this one, that is going to go here. And these are all the videos that we have published. And what is good is that all this part is automated. Let's go back to the dashboard. And here we have the Notion Academy, which is my Notion course. So here is how I'm structuring this phase. As you can see, I have tried to keep very consistent color scheme. So here, for example, is the curriculum, my course with some notes and everything. Where this is where I plan the lessons, the office hours, some external events, my templates that you can see here, all the templates that I'm selling and all the free templates. Then I have over here some operations like some SOP, some automation, some frequently asked questions from my students. Well, so all the information of the course is over here. Now we are back to the dashboard. Here, Systemify, this is my operations consultation company. So here I have all my projects, which I cannot really show because it contains personal information of my clients. And here is the website that I'm using super.so for creating. So if we go over here, this is my actual website, but it's the backend of the website website. If we want to check how this looks, it's over here. And here is with a beautiful CSS. So everything looks, I think, pretty cool. And you can see here how is the backend. Okay, so this is how I have it set up. And then I have here the company strategy. This is well, it's a mix in, in Spanish and English, but here is just a page where I write where I want to go. So if we move to the growth area here, I have a CRM that I use to track my relationships. So here I have two people that I want to keep having contact with. And as you can see, I am a little bit late for our meetings because we are in January 2022 and I should have contacted these people a little bit ago. So yes, this is a reminder. Thank you. 
<laughs> and here I have my meetings log with all the different people that I've been meeting with the meeting date and all this kind of stuff. Oh, by the way, also in my focus page, the one that I showed you before, I have this embed of the people that I want to contact. Okay. And that I haven't. If you want this CRM, I think this is a free template. Well, I don't think. I'm sure <laughs> this is a free template that you can download and that I am also going to leave in the description of this video. Then one page that I love and that I encourage everyone to have is the wall of love. Here is where I am uh, saving moments to remember because sometimes I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you know that sometimes we stop believing in ourselves. We think that we are not worth anything, any success. So for me, saving all this good stuff and then being able to come here and see them, it is very, very helpful. So for example, I have here my two months in YouTube updates, when I became a Notion ambassador, the first time that someone mentions me in a newsletter, like good comments from people. So when I got monetized on YouTube, when I passed 10K in revenue in my templates, and here every 100 subscriber, I make a screenshot so I can see how fast or slow I am growing. Here I have a page that in a very simple way I'm writing, which is my daily routine. So this is a routine that I try to follow here in Spain, but I'm not very successful at it. <laughs> but this is what I'm trying to do. So it's pretty simple. I like it with the colors. And yeah, so maybe it can give you some some inspiration on, on your own routine. Then I think some of you know that I'm a little bit in, into crypto. So I have bought some NFTs and this is the list of NFTs that I that I have, how much I've spent, how much I'm making so far. I'm not making much because I have lost like 0.34 ETH, which is like $1,000. But I believe in some of these projects. So I think that some of them are actually going to going to go up finally. So yeah, this is the, the way that I'm using to, to track them. Then another page that I find very pleasant to see is this trips page. So here I have the uh, years database. So there is one entry per year and my trips database that are all linked to a certain year. So this way I can create this view of all the different trips that I have done over the time and over the years, which I really enjoy. Then I have this other page with the countries visited where I actually track where I want to go and where my girlfriend has been. So we can kind of compare. So right now I have visited 20% of the world. I have 80% left and I have visited this number of countries left to visit. So this is uh, a kind of cool exercise that I did. I just copied all these countries from Wikipedia and then I just checked in the ones that I've been. And the two last pages that I'm going to show you is this one of the habits that is linked to my habit tracker that is included in my life compass template. And I'm able to create this dashboard over here with the four habits that I'm trying to get better at, which in meditation, I'm not really <laughs> succeeding, but it's cool to have this, this dashboard with the trophies that is the, the average of the habits that I have done every week. And here, the lifetime average of my habits. So in fact, just meditation has gone to shit, but the rest of them is like how of days I have done. So I think is is quite well. And finally, the scheduling accuracy. This is something that I have added recently and that during every weekly review, I'm going to track how many tasks I have done from the ones that I have scheduled, how many tasks have I not done from the ones that I scheduled. And the, here with the formula, I can just sum them both and calculate the percentage of the tasks that I did from the ones that I've scheduled. So this way I can see over here how accurate or how not so accurate I am being with my scheduling. So I can see here on average that I have been doing 70% of the things that I have scheduled. So this tells me that I'm always a little bit over scheduling. I don't think it's that bad because 70% I think is quite high, but I would like it to be more near 80 or, or 90. So I have to get a little bit better in scheduling my tasks. And finally, I said that there was two last pages, but I lied. This page I think is very useful if you're like me, yet that you don't like to delete anything. So whenever I see something that I'm not really using, but I may want to keep it for later. Later, normally it's never, but we never know, or I never know. So I created this old page, which is a mess, and I have here all the things that I don't need anymore, but who knows? So I think it's pretty useful and it's the only place that I allow myself to actually be messy. So yeah, it allows me to have this clean dashboard without things that I don't actually use. If you remember some systems that I did in the past, I think you may have realized that I have simplified a little bit my system. And in fact, I haven't even shown you my outcomes or my goals or nothing else, because I believe that just with tasks, we can actually move forward. So the more time pass, I'm always trying to make things as simple as 
as possible. So I hope that this video gave you some ideas of some new things that you may want to include into your own Notion. And thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, hasta la próxima.